welcome to Speaking in Spoons with your host, Christina Brookman. Hi, this is Christina Brookman, your host with Speaking in Spoons for Spoony Sunday. Um, it has been a rough week for me. I was actually in the ER the other night. Um, although, and it was a weird experience. Like, I know you guys know I have been to the ER for my migraines before. Um, but this time I started having like convulsion seizure, like things, um, and my poor boyfriend, I kept saying, no, I don't want to go. And, and he's like, I really think you need to go because he has seizures and he was, you know, nervous. But when it got to the point where I really couldn't communicate anymore, because I was just seized up and drooping and paralyzed. And he just, you know, he asked me and put his hand in, in mine and I kind of squeezed as much as I can to say, yes, you can call the ambulance because I knew it was I wanted to give him that permission because he kept saying you know please don't be mad at me um and I think a lot of us we can have that stubbornness in us like and for those with chronic illnesses we know how hard it is to go to the ER sometimes because you know you can when you have pain you can be treated like a pain you know a um pill seeker when you're not, um, or you have trouble, uh, with treatment in general, because nobody knows what's going on. And they'll say it's psychological because they don't know what it is because you have weird stuff. Um, but it's, you know, as I've discovered over the years, honestly, the ER is not the place for diagnosis. That's not what they're trained for. It's, you know, it's to fix trauma. Um, and, but, you do have to step back and realize what your caretakers and loved ones are going through and let go of that control a little and give them permission to take care of you because think you have to think of what they're going through as well. And that's easy to forget. You know, I forget that sometimes of this isn't just my experience, you know, it's their experience as well. It's very scary for him to watch. And I should know that because I, you know, I get scared with stuff he goes through um, and my friends go through. So um, anyways, I, I gave him that permission and the ambulance came and my worst nightmare finally happened. Like I've always been afraid I would fall in the shower and someone would have to call the ambulance and I'd be naked. Like every, it's like your worst nightmare, you know, that nightmare you go to school naked and that's what it was I was naked in my bed and there's like a team and I couldn't even really see because my right eye kind of sh clams shut when this happens but I know I hear voices and I know there's like a room of men you know that I don't know and there I am bare ass naked and it was humiliating but also like I'm in and out because I'm seizing and I'm migraining and it's just like, you know what? Who cares? It's my butt. It's my boobs. Who cares? I got to get to the hospital. And they were nice and they wrapped me in a blanket. Um, but then, you know, my tip flops out and it's like, oh, crap. But then they dropped me down the staircase. Um, I didn't even realize that's what happened. I kind of woke up to one of the EMTs on my head. I was like, ow, that hurt. And then later in the hospital, my boyfriend was like telling the doctors and the nurse, like, no, 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 no. She got dropped down half a flight of stairs. <laughs> I was so out of it. I didn't realize that that had happened. I did know that, like, I feel so bad for that. And he was so embarrassed. He was, like, really, really embarrassed. But, you know, it happens. People get dropped. Think of everything they do all the day in the lives that they're saving. Like, you know, my back's a little sore, but my back's, you know... I'm used to having pain, so it's like, whatever. Um, I went to the ER, that was the job. And um, 
<laughs> yeah, now I can put that on my bucket list, being naked in front of a room of people I don't know. And then I, we're at the hospital, I'm like, uh, when I'm getting discharged, I'm like, do you guys have any extra large scrubs for me that I can wear home? Because I'm naked. And my boyfriend had given my pajamas to the EMTs, but they're busy taking care of me. So, of course, that got left behind. And he didn't bring me something to wear. So, I'm in the hospital <laughs> bare butt naked. Um, so, yeah, that happened. But this was my first, not my first, the past couple of ER trips. Once I have been diagnosed officially with the hemiplegic migraines, all of a sudden my treatment has been better in the ER. Because they're no longer going, oh, you're crazy. That's why this is happening. Because they know what's happening and they know, give her a migraine cocktail. And in a few minutes, she'll stop drooling. She'll stop, like, see, all everything will stop. And with the seizing, with me, I get, like, purple in my face. I get so hot. Like, it, it comes on, like, a flash of getting overheated. And, you know, when he just started laying ice on me, I started getting better. Like I've had to do this for years, ice vest, ice caps. Like he calls me Alaska now. That's my new pet name, Alaska. But, which is so true. Like I could live in an iceberg and be an Eskimo without all the fur. And I would be like, so happy. But, um, but the doctor was so nice. And I was like, is this, you know, it's a non-epileptic seizure, which people will say, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, that's a pseudo seizure. That's psychological. But what a lot of people don't realize out there, there are physiological conditions that cause pseudo seizures. So it's like, it's in your head, but it's not always in your head. Um, and even if it were, it's still something that is legitimately happening to your body. And people deserve better treatment. They deserve not to be treated like, you know, they're psycho or something, you know, because we treat mental health horribly in this country. Um, and I'm sure other places as well, but um, just know out there, if you are having pseudo seizures, there are physiological causes, stress incur like stress induces every condition migraines lupus autoimmune like it, it like it will act you know aggravate many many types of different conditions um so that is it would be ignorant for me to sit here and say that stress in my life doesn't encourage that but and um i also had like the doctor said he said looking at your history complex would be mild putting it mild so, you know, I just have a lot of weird stuff and they all kind of fight and encourage each other. And it's just rolling with the punches and trying to make the best out of, you know, lemons. Um, and I like lemonade. So there you go. Um, anyway, so that was my weird and exhausting week. But I wanted to mention that, especially about the people that love you and are around you to keep in mind what they're going through, because it's not all about us, you know, it's their experience as well. And we can't deny that to them, you know, um, so we've got to take care of them as well as ourselves. And you can't take care of others unless you're taking care of yourself, um, hint, hint to people out there, um, I also had a great meeting this morning with DARS. Um, for those of you that have listened, the Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services, I have an active case and, you know, we're trying to figure out, you know, what can Christina do? <laughs> what can I actually do? Um, and can I go back to school for social work? And they were talking about a bunch of different accommodations, like having readers for me and, you know, just a lot of great stuff. And, and also like different organizations in town that I might be able to volunteer with, you know, that my experiences and what I've experienced and learned through all of this that I could contribute. So it was just very exciting to realize that there might, you know, I might, I just want to, I just like help people, people and I want to feel like I have a purpose. And I know a lot of you out there feel that way too. You you um you sometimes lose 
your purpose when you become disabled. And it uh, can become very isolating and depressing, um, that aspect. But, you know, there there are ways. And, and so it was nice to feel some hope. Um, so uh, I will talk to you or welcome to June. Happy June. And uh, we've got some great episodes coming up on the 15th. We're talking with Carol Driscoll from Disability Law Center of Virginia about assisted living and nursing homes. So this is a great episode for those of you whose parents are aging, but also um, for parents and family members of adults with disabilities um, that might need to be placed in assisted living or nursing home. Um, and also other options out there, you know, um, because this is something myself and my family have gone through with me, you know, looking at what other options are there. Um, and Carol is just a wealth of information and she's really great. So look forward to this episode. And then on the 30th, um, we are going to try to do, um, uh, uh our, interview with Hannah over about her book. Um, I have been having difficulty reading <clears throat> because of my migraines. So uh, Lexi's going to be reading it to me over the phone so that we can um, do our interview. Um, if that changes, I'll let you know. But have a great week and uh, save your spoons. Bye. If you want to contact us, please send a DM or email to speakinginspoons at gmail.com with any stories you have or would like to interview with us on any of our upcoming topics. And check out our website for all of our upcoming episodes and what's happening in the Speaking Spoons community at www.speakinginspoons.com. Thank you for listening to Speaking in Spoons and have a great day.